Today on The Nightlife, Combat and Tactics, Volume 3. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of The Nightlife. I am Derek Melinda, joined by just a couple members of The Knights tonight. We've got Bob. Yep. I'm here. I made it. You did? I did. Nick? How you doing? All right. I'm doing all right. How are, uh, how's the car? In one piece and up and operational now, so we're, we're having fun with it again. That's great. Please continue to comment, like, and subscribe to this video if you want to see more from us. We've really been enjoying getting to know the community better. Uh, there's some of you that comment on seemingly most of our videos, and I love it. And, of course, we have some of you who have gone ahead and taken that extra step and joined our Patreon a lot of thanks to that. The link is down below. We've got an exciting Discord going on. We've got some future things planned. We're thinking about starting to make some Pathfinder 2 content. The Discord Ooh. is hot right now. Oh, it is. <laughs> it takes up way too much of my time. It, it is like... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we really want to figure out what we can do for the community who uh, are supporting us. And if that means, you know, making some additional content, maybe some Pathfinder 2 specific items or creatures or adventures... Uh, you know, we'll start to do that. We want to hear from you. What what would you like to see from us that would, uh, you know, sort of push you into that realm to sort of decide to support us? But I digress. Let's get into it. So Combat and Tactics, Volume 3. So since we only have Nick and Bob with us today, we thought we would cover some more combat and physical type. Some martial stuff. Some martial, martial stuff, <laughs> yeah. Keep it in my wheelhouse. Exactly. So uh, let's get started. Um, all right. Well, Bob, uh, you, uh, you're a big fan of this. You used it very, uh, very famously in, uh, is it the shove? It is oh, the shove. I knew yes. it. I was like, when I shoved that guy into that, then it was like an open water area. It was a lumber mill. Yeah. yeah. You saw, you, you shoved him into a saw. I mean, it was pretty cool. Oh yeah. Like a movie. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of movie are you on? Uh, saw. <laughs> yeah. Saw. <laughs> Now I'm imagining like Aragorn kicking an orc into a, a buzz buzz chopper. <laughs> this is Sparta. <laughs> so, so first thing I want to now this is sort of a of a multi phase tip because really what I want to talk about are the athletics skill actions and how they relate to combat. Now there are trip shove. Um, keep going. Mm, trip shove. Yep. Uh. I don't know. In, in combat? Yep. Mm, do you know them? Trip, shove, and... Those are the only two I ever use. Uh, well, uh, I'll give you a hint. One is n not very used often because it's not very good. Oh. That's I, probably why I don't remember it. <laughs> I, w I was thinking <laughs> some kind of lift or... Gra it was grapple? Grapple. Okay, okay. Yeah, I got that one. Um, and the fourth one is disarm. I, I yep. was getting ready to say someone with a sword. Yeah. Dang it. Disarming block. Yep. Okay, I knew now, grapple. Now, and we can talk about this real quick. Um, one of the reasons why you guys may not be as familiar with those, and, and, and I think this is true for a lot of people in Pathfinder. Um, unfortunately, well, I understand why they did it. But unfortunately, in order to use any of the athletic skill actions, disarm, trip, shove, or grapple, you need to have... Yep. A free hand. And I'm wielding that two-handed maul. And a lot of people in Pathfinder 2 are either wielding a two-handed weapon, they have a sword and a shield, or they are wielding two weapons. So that means they do not have a free hand. Now, I should note that Pathfinder 2 has tried really, really hard in order to give people an incentive to go with only a one-handed weapon and the other hand free. Namely all these skill actions we're about to talk about. But also, too, um, there's even some fighter paths and builds that are sort of built around only having uh, one hand, uh, or uh, having a hand free, I should say. And they also have feats that allow you to, for like the Paladin has a feat where you actually have the shield kind of arbitrarily fastened to your arm. Correct. Like a buckler. Yes, but which gives you a free hand for some of those abilities, does it not? It does not. Oh. It gives you a free hand to like, hold a torch. Okay. But it cannot be used for an attack action. Gotcha. The other reason that some of these skills do not get used as often is because they are skills, like intimidate is used for demoralize, but they have the attack tag mm -hmm. or the attack trait. And that means they share in, are affected by, and increase your multiple attack penalty. Yep. And, you know, I could speak for myself here, but, you know, and, and I'd love to hear you guys chime in on this as well. 
it just doesn't seem fun to use your best attack to knock someone down. No, no. You usually I'm hitting. I'm hitting them, and then I'm, I'm like, what could I do with my third action? Right. And, and by that, I wish and by, I could shovel. Right. And by that time, your third action is minus ten. Yeah. I was gonna say, and the payoff is not good enough. So if you shove someone to take an action. They're going to be flat-footed if, they, if they're if they prone, right? You if mean you, trip. If you trip, sorry. If you trip someone and they're prone, yep. that's only a minus two. Correct. But my multiple attack penalty was going to drop to minus five. Correct. For the next one. Right. So, yes, I'm better, but I'm still, still not gaining going, anything. Yep. It's it's hurting you more than you're, it's gaining. You're just helping oh, your team. Oh, how wrong Nick is. That's ah, right, Bob. That's exactly that, that's, no. that's very true. You are helping your team. Team. Yeah. Yes. And I think that's the important thing to note. Now, and, and I'll give you a great example of this. Um, boy, man, we could really go off on this. Um, <laughs> that's why we're here. Um, so here's the thing. It, 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 and when I, if we use Nick and Bob, if we use two, you two as examples. Now, okay. Nick, you're playing a champion. Yes. Let's ignore for a moment your shield. So I drop my shield, let's say, in battle. Let's just ignore it for the time being. Right. Let's say you had the ability to easily trip and shove and do all those things. Okay. Um, your character does somewhere around the neighborhood of you know, 2d8 points of damage plus six. Right. right, not very much. Not a whole lot. Right. Now, Asius, Bob, your barbarian who is giant instinct. Oh, yeah. He does a lot. Yeah, plus eight, uh, plus 16. Right. 2d8, 2d12 plus 2D, 16. 2d12. Yeah, when he's raging. Right, right. So When Bob's, he's not raging. <laughs> yeah. Bob's character does, on average, 31 points of damage. Actually, a little bit more because your rune is shocking. But oh, yeah. 31 damage, well, as Escanor, the champion, uh, he's only doing 15. So Aesius literally does twice as much damage as Escanor. That means Escanor has to hit twice to do as much damage as Aesius does in one attack. Now, that to me tells me, yeah, you know, Aesius or a character like him should not be probably using their attack to, you know, trip, trip, push, push up, or push up. because your job in the party is to do that damage. Yep. Someone has to, right? And, you know, knocking someone prone and being making them flat-footed or intimidating them and making them frighten one, those are all good things. But the best status is dead. Because <laughs> <laughs> it turns out when the character is dead, they're also prone, you know? Um, uh, yeah. Six feet under prone. <laughs> and they can't hurt me. Yeah, hypothetically. Right. So, you know, one of the things is understanding your role in a fight and whether or not you are this damage dealing character. Because if you're not, and you're, that's not what you're contributing, then to your point, Nick, yeah, using your best attack to knock someone prone, you're like, well, it doesn't really make that much of a payoff. They get a minus two to their AC, but I now have a minus five penalty to my uh, next attack. So I'm down, right? But no one else is. Right. So and it'll th- apply for the next round for everybody else. So it right. would be it would behoove me to try to potentially trip if I know that Asius is coming up next. Correct. To well, also lay keep down in mind that destiny. If, yeah. if, if if someone is tripped, it means that um, you know Burl. Uh, you know, if he uses a spell attack roll, that character is flat footed. Also, so, so that so right. Their AC is lower for purposes of hitting him with like a fireball or, or not a fireball, sorry, like a firebolt. If Tim's arcane archer shoots an arrow, the character's flat footed. If mm-hmm. Lucky Burl's animal companion Badger gets into it, they're all flat footed to that. But they also have to use an action to get up. You got it. That is, I think, even more important. Now we talked about before about a tip about the action economy. Now, yeah, yeah. No, I was going to no, say I mean, well, this, is this is this is this is we're also talking about like a single enemy, right? Yeah. Some I, I don't know is tripping the most ideal thing when there's a handful of, because you're talking about action economy next. Yep. And it's like, yeah, if they only have three actions and I took one of them, so they have to step up, that's huge. But if there's five of them and only one guy is, it's maybe not the, I don't know. Well, we're going to go, let me give you an example. Okay. And again, this is a, this is a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Visual? Well, it's a very simplistic example. Oh, okay. 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 So we're going to use, we've got our, we got our three party members here. Yeah. We've got Escanor. We've got Asius. That's me. Uh, we got Gwildor. We got somebody else around here. <laughs> we'll just put Lucky in. Okay. So this is our team of Team Good. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to, again, this is a very simplistic example. The party, now this is an action economy play. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, remember, we've talked about this at length, but we're going to make it really simple, and we're going to say that and Bob, I don't want you to get confused because I know you're always like, but he has reach, but he has reach. Uh, well, that's easy what I think about. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to ignore that. And we are gonna put in, we're going to put in this bugbear. Oh, this isn't just some 
lone bugbear. This is Grothak, chieftain of the Orc Eye tribe. Well, now I really want to kill him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we've talked about this before, but you guys have three actions apiece. Mm-hmm. So right. that means that there's 12 actions on team team good mm-hmm. and three actions on team bad. Yep. And one of the things that we talked about is how do we get you to use all those actions? Now, again, we're going to make this a very simplistic example that let's say everybody in this party is a, even even the wizard back here, uh, wants to get into combat and they want to swing their sword. Okay. So you move in here, you attack, you move in here, you attack, you move in here, you attack, moves in here, and attacks. So nobody's flanking. Well, well this is a simplistic example. Okay. You would want to flank. <laughs> but in this example, um, you guys have used your attacks. You've gone to him and attacked him a bunch. Yep. Now, remember, he's higher level than you. Yep. He gets to go. It's now his turn. He's got three actions. Yep. He's probably going to crit with the first one. More than likely. He's got a good chance of critting and definitely probably hitting still with the second attack. Mm -hmm. And that third attack could also hit. Correct. And even his regular hits are like... Devastating. Devastating for Mm -hmm. you guys. So you've played right into his hands. We've we've came right next to him. Right. He doesn't have to waste a move. Correct. He doesn't have to waste a move or anything. Now, you could say, okay, well, let's try a different tact then, right? We want him to waste his actions. So how about this? How about we do this instead? How about all of us, I'm going to move in with my first action, Mm -hmm. hit him once, Mm -hmm. my best attack, and then move back. Because not everyone has attack opportunities as monsters in Pathfinder. That's correct. And even if they do, maybe Escanor does it first. Yeah. Yeah. And now the guy has- We pull it out. Now the guy has, right? And then Escanor does the same thing. He uses one action to move in. He attacks. He moves back. Gwildor does the same thing. Lucky does the same thing. Moves in. Action. Attack. Now, it's his turn. Yep. Now, if he wants to go crush on someone, he's got to burn an action. Yeah. Right. And he only gets two. And, you know, he can only hit someone twice. Oh, that's good, right? That's, that's better. But you all had to spend four actions as a group to get to that scenario. Mm-hmm. Right. He had to, you had to spend an action to move in. Then you had to spend an action to attack. And then you had to spend that third action to move back. Mm-hmm. Use an action, use an action. So you've used four actions to move back. Imagine this scenario. You move in. We'll make it easier. We'll do, we'll do you last, Bob. You move, Lucky moves in, attacks twice. Gwildor moves in, attacks twice. Escanor moves in, attacks twice. You move in. You, Trip. You attack. attack. No, nope. oh, okay. you attack. And then you shove him. Oh, five feet back. Now look. He's still got to make an action to move. He still has to use an action to move. But now the whole party... Only had to waste one action. Mm, the shove. Right. Instead of four moving Instead of back, four moving That's back. actually really interesting. So when you're against a single target, it can actually be better huh. for you to shove. And my hammer can shove. And your hammer can shove. Now, does the shove, so I know with attack of opportunity, I know Aesius has attack of opportunity. So yeah. when they go into his field, into his range, and then exit it, he has an opportunity. Does that shove also? No, shove never provokes attacks of opportunity. Okay. Yeah. Also, too, if you want to get, you know, in, in terms of, um, you know, a certain in certain instances, depending on your Orion, when you show somebody, you can also move. So he's here. You could have shoved him like here and then moved with him. And now if you have attack of opportunity, if he wants to, you know. Try to get away try from to me. Go, get away from you. Uh, I mean, he could step and attack Lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he couldn't get to Gwildor. Yeah. Or Escanor without provoking an attack of opportunity from you mm-hmm. first. Otherwise, he's going to bring his pain on you, Yeah, which, you know, we discussed maybe not be the best thing. But but imagine if this was you with all your hit points and full temp and yeah. you don't- I'm right, tanking it for and, the Right, team, you're tanking yeah. it for the team or if it's Escanor, mm-hmm. right, with his really high armor class. So- Now, can you combine that? Can you, so let's say, so I went in before us or before Azius did. Yeah. If on my last action, I tripped him. Right. So now, he's prone, but, but we're, can he shove him as well? He can, but we're, we're getting to the key point here. Okay, sorry. If you try to trip him with your last action, it's not going to work. You have a minus Ma- 10 yes, yeah. or minus 5. Minus 5, then. If you really want these to work against the higher level opponents- You got to do it on the first one. You got to do it on the first one, which means somebody needs to bite the bullet, mm-hmm. you know, and be the person who pushes them back and then stands there. Yeah, someone needs us to be the support class. The support class. It can't always be. Now, sometimes, depending on the- 
the texture of the battlefield, it might have to be Asia. Mm -hmm. But I think the key here is when you look at shove, when I first looked at Pathfinder, I said, you know, I don't really see where you would use shove that much, right? But I think the real advantage of shove is understanding that if you put even one square of distance and they don't have reach, then they are going to have to burn one of their actions, which is a lot more precious. Yeah. That's You're using point. one. They're using one because you go, okay, I shove him. And then he just five foot and comes back. Okay. So what? It's like, well, yeah, but you that's have- That's 33% of their actions. That's 33% right. of their you, You've basically stunned them. Yeah. Without them getting to make a save. Yeah, that's huge. Absolutely. It's absolutely huge. Hmm. Right. So, you know, shove can be a very, very powerful thing because of that reason. Hmm. Um, now, trip, to your point, is also very, very, very powerful. But it's more powerful when everyone's kind of leaving the monster rather than going to it. Because now, if everyone's like, okay, well, we're going to come over here and we want to go do other things and fight other monsters. And you go, okay, well, before I dip out, I'm going to trip him. And now I'm going to move away. Now, in order to get back to the party, he's going to have to stand up one action and move two actions. So now when he gets there, he's only making one action. So As long as I can outpace him, you mean? Because if not, he could move and then hit me. Well, no, he would stand up, move, and, and hit you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but one, only one attack. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. not going to attack you twice because if he was still standing, he Correct. could just move and then swing at you twice. Right. And so, you know, shove, especially if you have attacks of opportunity, especially if you have reach, um, can be very, very, very powerful. And furthermore, uh, if you're outnumbering your opponent, if the opponent you're outnumbering the opponent, there could be a situation where the party wants to sort of surround the guy and wail on him. But then you're playing right into that monster's, right? He so I got a question. He wants you to surround him so that he can just completely wail on you. But if one person, if the party surrounds someone and then they shove him, now he's got to burn an action. And not everyone in the party has to move back. So in this scenario, yeah. this reminds me of our last fight against the uh, the ogres. Yep. And I knocked the guy down. Yeah. And I debated whether to stand by him so that if he stood up, I would provoke the neck attack of opportunity or leave him so that he would have to stand up and then move. Yeah. And I stood there and he just attacked me from the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'm wondering if I should be moving more away from the monster well, to make no, him do I mean, two things. When there's a very powerful monster, remember that. That was a boss. Yeah, huh? that guy was a boss. He had a reaction. He yeah. had attack of opportunity. Remember that um, him getting to make an extra attack uh, especially with his power, his damage bonus, his attack bonus, his extra attack is worth a lot. Mm -hmm. If you can avoid him making an attack of opportunity, you're going to want to do that. And get, so getting away from him is kind of what you're what you're suggesting. No, I'm no, saying you said you made the right move because I think you, you stayed there. Right, I think you made the right move staying oh. there because you did not engage his attack of opportunity, which you, would have done that had, much more damage to you. Right, if you had stood That's right, up, if I, or, yeah, if, you no, would granted, be dead in that match. If they're in prone. Uh, I love how you guys call it like match Sorry. mission. It's so mm -hmm. I corrected I, myself. I, you did, but I wonder how long you'll have to play before you. you know. um, I'm guessing a lot more years. Right. Shove and trip can not only be used, uh, or trip rather, can be used to you know inflict the flat footed condition, but what they can really be used to do is eat up enemy actions. Yeah. Right. Now, we talked about this before. The unfortunate side effect is that in order to do these things, you need to have a hand free or you need to have a weapon that allows you to do that. Mm -hmm. And so in the case of Azius with his dire maul, mm -hmm. he has, it has the shove. Yep. You don't have that. I got nothing, which is kind of funny when you think about it because I'm carrying a shield. I know. And I can't shove with a shield. I know. Like, <laughs> it, <laughs> that it, just doesn't seem right to it me. It doesn't seem right to me either. <laughs> uh, but I'm sure it, it's done for a game balance reason. I, I'm sure. I, I understand that. I mean, I, right. I can understand with the mall, you have a massive hammer that you're basically smacking into right. somebody <laughs> knocking them back. I would but, all, you know, I, I would have also, a shield. <laughs> right. You know, I would also say that, you know, there might be some instances where shoving someone could be tactically advantageous. Obviously, the the, the no-brainer is there's a pit or there's a wood chipper. That was awesome. And yes. you shove them into that. Obviously, that make, make total sense. But you might have two allies and there's a space between them. And maybe all you need to do is shove the enemy. And now your allies are flanking the enemy and they don't have to move. Right. right. You're not, they don't have to waste an action <laughs> in order to within, set up a flank. You shove them within their reach. You move them into the flank. Um, another option might be that like someone might be threatening one of your casters. Now your caster could step mm -hmm. and then cast a spell with their remaining two actions, but they would rather stride and move, you know, 25 or 30 feet away. But if they do that, they're going to attack an attack of opportunity. Yeah. So if you shove the monster off of your ally, then your ally goes and your ally can move the 30 feet 
and not incur the, and not, attack, not incur of the attack of opportunity and then cast a spell. So this is also extremely beneficial then for a spellcaster that is unfortunately engaged in melee combat. And <laughs> well, it's usually the case that a spellcaster he should not. They should not. <laughs> but what I'm just saying is if if the enemy goes around all of the melee characters and starts to go after the spellcasters because they realize that's where the damage is being dealt. Well, 90, and the paladin left. Ninety percent of the time, <laughs> it's going to be better for the spellcaster to just step because yeah. it, they're probably not going to have a high athletics. They're probably not going to have <laughs> a high true. strength. That's true. And furthermore, like you want to be able to automatically succeed. That's right. why I wish my hammer could hook and pull. But we discussed that. That's not possible. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't even see how that would work. Like, I think it's just so cool sounding. Well, also it's like. It's a big, heavy object. Yeah. So I'm really strong. It makes more sense to push away right, because you're basically shoving them. I want to grab and right, pull them in. Because when you're pulling, now you have to work against the weight. I know. It's actually harder. I know. I still think it's cool. A very light object, like a whip, would no, be better I agree. than pulling someone. I, I know I'm wrong. I okay. still think it's cool. Okay. As long as you're wrong. <laughs> um, so yeah, so shove is obviously used for repositioning. It can be used to eat up enemies' actions by making them have to stride or step an extra time. It can be used to reposition them into a flank. It can also be used, like I said, to break them off of an ally to allow that ally some breathing room so that they can get away and not provoke an attack of opportunity. Trip is just the nuts. Um, it usually is going to end up eating up an action. Um, it can potentially provoke an attack of opportunity. If you have a lot of people in your party with the attack of opportunity ability, trip is oh, yeah. the best thing you could be doing. Especially right? if it's part of like your attack. I know Danny had that wolf yeah. drag yes. in it from the monk, and that could make him trip yeah. afterwards. I'm like, oh, that thing's awesome. Yeah, the but fight, the other thing too, the fighter, was that, sorry, the other thing too was that he had the ability that if they tried to stand up, oh, he, stand he was still. able to. Yeah, yeah, he was able to interrupt that action and potentially stop them from doing it, which yeah. would eat up. Basically, was, use up cool. their action, use up their whole turn. Right? Yeah, but I mean, I mean, it's it's the case where let's say Asius has attack of opportunity, and then let's say that you had another person in the party, like you know, if Gore came back, our fighter, and he fighter. Had, and he had attack of opportunity, and then you had Danny who was playing a monk who had standstill, which provokes attack of opportunity and movement. If the three of you were surrounding someone and tripped them. When they went to stand up, oh God. all three of you would get to make attacks of opportunity. <laughs> That's deadly right there. So prone is, you know, knocking someone, you know, and the and I also add this, the other advantage of tripping is it targets their reflex. Right. Whereas shove targets their fortitude. Oh, that okay. That I wasn't even thinking about that stuff. So a lot of times, like the big huh. heavy brutes are gonna have Good a, fortitude. A good fortitude, but a bad reflex. That that makes it even better to want to trip like the big baddie. Yeah. So Wow. Okay. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, compare your your character. What's your fortitude versus your reflex? Do you know? I think it's uh he's gonna look. But uh, you know, so that can be thirteen. Well, it's fourteen now. Ver point difference? Oh, it's five point difference. Yeah, five point difference. That's Sorry. huge, right? I mean, that's absolutely huge. And if you crit on the trip, they take an extra couple points of damage. <laughs> oh, like a fall? Yeah. Okay. It's kind of silly. Bludgeoning damage should or something? should be more, but yeah, it is bludgeoning. So trip is obviously- depend on how tall you are. Yeah. So, <laughs> so trip can make someone flat-footed. It can make them flat-footed to not just, you know, the melee characters. It can make them flat-footed to the, you know, who are used to getting flat-footed from flanking, but it can make them flat-footed uh, to your range uh, attackers, to your spell casters who might be using spell attacks. It can be very, very powerful. When they're on the ground, they get a minus two penalty to attack. When you're flanking someone and you've- have them flat-footed to those attacks, that's great. Yep. But they don't get a penalty to their attack rolls. If they're prone, they do. They do. That's huge. And then, of course, it takes an action to stand up. And that could potentially provoke attacks of opportunity, too. Prone can be brutal. Trip can be brutal. Yeah. It's a great, And great if you could stack other penalties on someone that's tripped... That's prone now. That makes you very like. Oh, status, yeah, they're prone. Uh, the status. They're, oh, they're frightened. Moralized, <laughs> frightened. But yep. also keep in mind, right? Remember, things like frightened or sickened also, you know, give you a minus one penalty to your um, your saves, your saves, and your things. But that also means that the save DC goes down. So if someone, oh, yeah. yeah. right? So if someone's reflex save is let's say fourteen, then the DC to trip them is twenty four. If you make them frightened. It's 22. It's or, well, 21, depending on your, or sorry, wow. Goes down minus one, everyone. Yeah, if they're frightened, I didn't give a number. So you any number you could have said would have been right there. But <laughs> uh, if they're frightened one, now their reflex bonus is only plus 13. So the DC is now 23. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to trip them yep. because they're frightened. So trip is powerful. The, very powerful. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for this uh, Combat and Tactics Volume 3 uh, Athletics Edition. Uh, join us, of course, for future tips and tricks. Um, 
subscribe. Please uh, leave a like if you enjoyed this comment. Leave some, uh, or sorry, this content. Leave a comment below with other things that you think we should cover. There's a lot of elements to Pathfinder 2, and we'll get around to them eventually. Check out our Discord. The link is in the uh, doobly-doo below, and that'll kind of, if you're interested in supporting us, helping us, or just, uh, you know, joining us to tell us how wrong we are about everything, we'd appreciate all of that. Yeah. All right. Well, for the Knights of Last Call, my name is Derek Melinda saying thank you for joining us, and welcome to the Knights of Last Call. Thank you.